Hello everyone, this video will be about a new feature in Carlson 2022, Drone Mission Planning. Uh, this feature allows you to generate a drone flight plan for taking aerial photos. Okay, let's get started. In this project I have um, a construction site which is represented by this blue perimeter line and the red line represents a road like a center line or the line that goes along a road. <clears throat> um, before we actually start uh, our mission planning we need to make sure that we have a projection defined for, our, for the drawing and it can be done under settings, drawing setup here we need to check our projection. We can select one of the predefined projections here or we can go to more predefined, defined projection and here we have a few options. The first one is add predefined uh, where you can select a country or region that you are interested in. For example you can go to Poland and select one of the projections here um, in my case, it's all already predefined projection, so I won't uh, use this. Uh, I, I don't want to use one of these. Uh, and another option here is you can add uh, parameters for the, for the projection from uh, one of these files: CSL, UPD, or PRJ files. And uh, in addition to that, it's possible to enter user-defined uh, projections where you give a name to the system and then enter all parameters that are required to define this projection. And of course you can always check uh, existing uh, projection with edit. Okay, uh, as I said I'm gonna use this one predefined projections, Great Britain, and also it's good to make sure uh, the system uh, the units. In this case it's going to be metric system, everything will be in metric units. Um, also it's good to load a background from Google and it can be done with the Carlson GIS module. It's, uh, it can be used as a separate module but it can be also a part of a civil suite module, uh, sorry, civil suite. Um, and once we are in this uh, module, you can go to Images, Place Google Earth Image. Then you can just give a name. I'm using the same name as, as my uh, drawing has. Say yes, and I will specify the position for my background uh, on the screen. So I'm picking the first point and then the second point. Just uh, make it a little bigger. Um, in the next dialog that appears, uh, I can select a resolution for my background image, uh, low, medium or high, in this case I'm going to use medium, and map type can be selected, uh, so I'm going to use IRL, and the layer name will be used by default, okay. The program is downloading now the aerial map and we'll place it as a background. Okay, now we can see that our construction site, how it looks, and also we see the road. It's actually not a center line, but this line will be used for, um, for the corridor mod. Now everything is ready and we can go back to survey and under survey menu here we have a new feature which became available in 2022 version. We run this command and we see that uh, a new dialog appeared on the left side. Okay, we can uh, start now with the uh, drone mission planning. Uh, first of all we need to decide which mod we're gonna use. If it's um, something like construction site, we can use one of these 
uh, area scan options or structure scan. Uh, so the area scan will uh, place, will generate the, the flight plan inside this area, inside the area we specify. So the difference between these two is just single pass and double pass. So in, in, in case the, of the double, uh, we will have one pass and the second one will be perpendicular. So the drone will fly actually like two times over this area. Um, so the difference uh, for the structures is uh, is that, that it's almost the same as uh, one single pass area scan, but in addition to that, the drone will also fly along the corridor, which can help in some cases to get the better 3 d uh, model uh, at the edge of this area. Okay, um, and the corridor scan definitely can be used for some uh, roads or uh, pipes or everything that is not an aerial uh, uh, object. Okay, uh, so let's start with the, this one. And once it's selected, the program will prompt you, will, will, will show a prompt to select a home position. Would you like to select it now? Yes. And uh, you need to just uh, pick a position where you're going to launch your drone. So in, in this case, um, I'm going to select the, the point here in this parking. You have not selected the scan perimeter. I say yes, I want to specify it now. And I'm picking this blue line. OK, so the program just um, has generated the uh, flight for the drone. And um, we can see the flight time now is 6 minutes 40, 46 seconds, um, an approximate use of, of the battery, um, and also number of images in the area. But I can always uh, change parameters here and see uh, the, the resulting uh, number of images and flight time, for example. Height above ground in this in, in the current leads 30 meters, but if I move it to the right, so it increase the high, I can see that the number of my flight lines is changing, and obviously, as higher we fly, as uh, less uh, as fewer images we will have. So. For example, I will stick to 40 meters, or even I, for this small area, I can I can even do 35 meters, so my pictures will be better. Okay, I can uh, use or also a mouse wheel to move um, um, this bar, or I can just enter value here. Okay, 35. I will go back to 35 here. And uh, also, I can change flight speed. Now it's 5 meters per second. And obviously, if I increase the speed, my flight time also uh, will, will change. and. Uh, it's, it's going to be just three minutes compared to six minutes before. But I will go back to five meters per second. Um, gimbal angle, also one of the parameters that can be changed. Uh, so 90 degrees means that our camera is pointed directly uh, vertically down. But um, the recommended uh, gimbal angle is around 75. So we can do 75. Uh, one more thing uh, to good, uh, one more thing to, to use is, um, is to show image coverage so you will understand the area that will, you will cover. And for example, here uh, at this uh, uh, 
close to the boundary of my site, I see that the coverage is not actually very good. So maybe I can change something here to improve because I don't need all this area, but it would be better to see what we have here or to get images for this area. And here I can play with um, azimuth, for example. Okay. Uh, and see if if something is not really good, uh, the the full area may not be covered. The program will tell you. So we don't cover the entire area with this. Maybe I will have to change the gimbal angle. Yeah, it's 80 degrees here. Looks better than 90, 75. But still, we have some issues here. So I will move back to. 70, probably 70 degrees for azimuth. Uh, or maybe I can um, play with the height, change it to 40. Yeah, and it's, it's much better now. And uh, I can uh, live, live it as it is now. Uh, also, there are some more uh, options here and tools. For example, constraint heading. Um, it means that our drone will always keep heading and will fly more like a like a, an airplane. But if we uncheck it, sorry, uh, in this case, if we uncheck it, it will uh, fly more like an airplane. So it will change the heading. But if we check this option, it will fly more like a drone. The heading will be uh, will be the same. Okay, so we can also run the simulation just to see where we start and how the drone will fly. It's pretty pretty nice to see it. I will stop the simulation now. And um, the last thing I want to mention here is settings. So here we have a few more settings. The first one is elevation compensation. It can be used for uh, uneven terrain. For example, when we have uh, some hills and uh, uh, when we launch a drone, it, uh, it um, it controls the elevation from this point, from the launching point, and uh, then it will just fly, um, um, taking into account the initial height. But uh, with the really uneven terrain, sometimes you may get um, very large or very small pictures, which you don't need. And uh, using this option allows to compensate elevation at each. Uh, point of uh, where the drone takes images. Uh, you can also turn on this option stop for pictures. It means that the drone will stop for some time to take each picture. Uh, of course it will increase the flight time. And now you see it's 5 minutes 48 seconds. If I check this option I can see that now it's 6 minutes. For this small area, it's not essential, but um, for bigger area, you may probably consider not using this option just to save time and, and the battery. Also, it's, um, it's important to mention image overlap. Uh, we have front lap and side laps. Uh, and um, basically, it means that uh, we need to have uh, an overlap for our images. And for the front lap, it's recommended to have at least 60% of, of the overlap. And for the sides, it's, um, it's recommended to have 70%. And uh, at the bottom of this dialog, um, we can enter a field of view for the camera that we are using and also aspect ratios for X and Y. This, these are parameters from, from the camera you're using. Okay, so once you're happy with this uh, plan, you can save it and 
uh, it will be saved as a uh, plan file with the extension of plan and then you can use this plan uh, file in um, DJI applications or you can use for example Q ground control application here um, yeah so here we can open this file and here we are so this plan was loaded and we can see uh, all information was stored in this uh, file like attitude uh, hold for one second uh, you can change it if you want here and then and, and so on okay um, let's go back to Carlson and also I will show you the corridor and yeah every time anytime actually you can change it to structure scan for example and with, it will add more pictures along the polar line of course your flight time will be uh, will be uh, increased but um, you'll get more images and uh, the resulting uh, let's say 3d uh, model after processing of these images will be uh, probably better okay so I'm happy with this uh, and I'm, I'm just uh, I will delete this plan and I will change my mod to corridor and I will pick my corridor so this is just a 2d polar line yeah for, for the for the aerial for the area it needs to be a closed polar line um, yeah I will select the home position and in this case I will launch it from this point Flight plan extends far from start point. Maintaining line of sight of the drone may not be possible. It's just a warning, but uh, you still can um, still can use it. Um, and here you can control again everything that I mentioned before, and um, also you can change the number of passes here. So basically, it's just uh, changes the width of your corridor so if I change it to two passes so you see that uh, my drone will now fly two times uh, using two passes and of course three passes will make it even wider but I'm happy with the with this for example and I can also save it I can run simulation and see how my drone will fly and um, yeah, once I'm happy with the result, I can stop simulation and save the plan. Okay, uh, this is it about a new feature for drone mission planning that is available in Carlson Survey. Thank you.